Welcome to our podcast. Um, if you're new <coughs> to me. our podcast, I feel that I have to warn you that we don't do this in a studio. We do <coughs> this in our home. Currently, our 16-year-old is singing upstairs. Our dogs are padding about looking for trouble and, and looking for foxes. running around with a strimmer outside. And there's somebody strimming the garden next door. But hey, this is the real us. <laughs> um, and also, sorry, it's been, it's been a fair time. We did promise we were going to go every week and it's just been ludicrously busy. So um, this is the first time we've had a chance to sit down, really, opposite each other and even talk. I'd have forgotten who you are. Who are you? I mean, we're on screen so much, if you go to our YouTube channel, if you're listening to this, that you'd wonder, well, you're all with each other all the time. But we don't really talk, do we? Yes, we do. I think we should talk about but basically, talking. we've been really, really busy um, uploading a lot of content on our YouTube channel. Yeah, do that over there. and family. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out, because you can also see this podcast, because yeah. we are in vision. I love Same, going to the podcast app as well, and I love seeing little stars and little little reviews. So leave a review on the uh, on iTunes as well. I like that. I like mm. that. I am actually going to go and shut the back door because I think it's getting a little bit loud. The stream is getting a bit loud. Yeah. So, um, okay. yeah. so uh, what we always do with our podcasts is our promise is there is no edit. So if Sainsbury suddenly arrives with a delivery or Ricardo, depending who I'm choosing this week, <laughs> we will continue on. Um, I don't know why we're so married to that, but we are, aren't we? We, just we should get a cardo. Always... We should get a cardo to sponsor us. <laughs> we should. We've always just wanted to do that to do an unedited podcast. So, well, because where it will go, we nobody knows where it will go. No, bad temperedness. Oh yeah, being bad tempered, and I think probably both genders in any relationship or the same gender in a same sex relationship. Uh, would would say that there are as many sort of old wives' tales, if you like, and sort of phrases, aren't there, for women of a certain age and mansplaining and, and sort of, you know, moody men and all things like that. And I thought we could... Cross old man, bad temper. Cross old man. man. It's something that you often say to me, and I often feel mis misread, misunderstood and misrepresented. Good God, so many misses there, but none of them miss, miss, missing you. Um, <laughs> and And I'm sure you do too. So I thought it would be good to talk about that because it is, I think, something that I only ever... I'll just scroll back a bit for me because I have first-hand experience of deep, bad-temperedness as a child. Mm. And so I remember the only relationship I saw of any sort of unity, for want of a better expression, uh, was my nan and granddad's. And that was a, you know, it was a good, good old-fashioned relationship. They met in the war, they married in the war. She was a very sort of matriarchal woman and he was a very sort of buttoned-up gent he was very gentleman telegraph reader telegraph telegraph and express would never read the papers at the weekend what a That's curious strange. quirk yeah. expensive. Uh, always read the express and the telegraph was always berating my mother for reading the observer uh, communist scum da mm. and uh, and manan so anyway so, so this was the relationship and obviously when i was very young because i had a very sort of uh, at sea childhood it was a beacon of security simply mm. because i knew it was always there and they were always there but then when I got to about probably the age of nine or 10, I began to realize that whilst my nan was a very domineering and irritating woman, uh, she was also the one that was full of life. And she had, and I don't want to get emotional about it as I remember, but she was full of life and she never traveled the world. She never went anywhere, but she was always talking about expanses of the, the pyramids and Henry VIII. She was always traveling. She ambition. She was traveling in time mm. and traveling in space, despite having been in a suburban bungalow most of her life. Mm. And she took me with her. And I began to realise that Dad was a miserable old git. And he would clip her win wings, and I realised at quite a young age. So at quite a young age, I had a very curious contrast where I had a very you feminine... first memory. I had a very active feminist lesbian mother who was almost neglecting her son, you know, to pursue the cause, if you like, do all these other things and live her sort of hedonistic life. And then I had this other sort of feminist situation where a woman was being quite crowded out by the... By the almost vacuum-like personality of my, of, my fa of my grandfather. No, don't get me wrong, I adored my granddad. I absolutely no, adored no. him. And uh, he was my mate, and I, I was his mate, and we'd go on walks and everything. But I just remember there being a moment. And yeah, there was a moment. It was a moment where he went away one summer. He'd always go off to the potteries, because our family history is in, in meshed with uh, the potteries in the Stoke, Staffordshire area. And he went away one summer, but he went off in a mood. They'd had an argument about something, and he didn't back in the day. He, didn't, he used to ring, but he, never, he didn't ring her once for something like four or five weeks. And I, God. I missed him. For four or five 
weeks. Yeah, it was a long time. I oh, missed, I missed films. And, and, and Nanny Thelma really was at sea because she was, as she would say, I had the screaming ab jabs because I, I, where was he? What was he was doing? Was he dead? Yeah, precisely. And she also knew he was cross with her. So they had a massive fight and he Yeah, I didn't, I didn't witness the you fight. But I knew that when he came back, it was just the most almighty atmosphere of, I've just got to check as you lean forward with the sun on the back of your head. How's that looking? Um, I've got sun here. Is it making How's your face go into shadow? You? No. No? Okay. I've just got sun on my hair. Okay, Sorry, good. podcast people. Um, yeah, when he came back, there was just the most awful atmosphere. I'm getting to the point. A huge atmosphere in the house. And I remember it being absolutely unbearable. Mm. And I remember it being all pervasive. And I remember hating my granddad. And I mean, I literally, when he used to go for his afternoon sleep, I'd start sticking my fingers up at him when he was asleep because I was so, cro I didn't Aww. know what to do. I was kind of jumping on the spot going, mm -hmm. and, then I'd, and, then I'd, and then I'd beat myself up because I felt really bad because I'd let him down. But because he'd been so miserable and I could see my nan was so upset and I remember hearing sounds of her crying in the front bedroom, the, you know, the bedroom that we were in. Um, and there was a point where I, 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 I broke down and I said to them both, took them into the side piece and I said, please, 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 you don't understand. You love each other. You have to love each other. You always love each other. I can't, I don't want you to fall out like this. Mm. And they manufactured a hug. But over the, but from that point on, my dad, all granddad. I remember him, granddad, I called him dad, was defined by his mood. Mm. And he was very, very bad tempered. Crotchety. Crotchety. So would it be the small things as much as the big things? No, it was more sort of pervasive than that. It was a real gloom. It was just a gloom and a Do sort you think of. He was depressed. Silent. Yeah, absolutely, he was depressed, and he was also very ill for many years and had to take lots of drugs. So I'm yeah. sure he had to, you know, had huge heart, heart condition and all sorts of things. But I do remember, but your and, and was I do quite bad tempered too. Well, Nan wasn't bad tempered. She was. She had just a temper. Yeah. So she'd blow. He was like a constantly sort of whistling kettle, steaming kettle, and she was the whistle. Well. And so yeah. the, I do remember, so the reason I've said all of that is I remember, so when I'm now told that I'm bad-tempered, a number of things kick into place. Or when the bad-tempered phrase comes up, or the you're in a mood comes up, I go into a number of kind of, a number of scurrying issues. I, I think, no, I'm not, no, no. And then I stop and catch myself and think, oh my God, I'm actually being just like my granddad. Well, we all do it, don't we? I mean, yeah. we all do it. I mean, we all have flashes of our mums and our dads, with you, no dad, but granddad. Of course we do. Everything we pick up everything from our parents, mm. and um, there's my family is a very hot-headed. That's the post, you know, hot-headed. And I mean, when we're when we're talking about bad-temperedness in regarding marriage, are we talking about? We're not talking. I don't think about the huge tempers where there's terrible fights and people walk off. We're talking about that sort of corrosive day in day out sort of responses to yeah, things, yeah, yeah, aren't we? The yeah. little things. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's little bites, there's little spits yes. that I, I think are so damaging to relationship, to romance, to everything. And yet it's incredibly hard not to do that because we're all stressed. You know, we have to have one face for the world outside. And mm. my God, being a TV presenter, that is a smiling face the whole time. To mm. be a presenter, everything you say, you have to say it with a smile. Mm. Mm. You know, you're sometimes working with difficult characters. Mm. You're sometimes working under a lot of pressure. And you as well, in your line of work, very yeah. stressful. Mm. Very much, you have to be positive and you have to be clear-headed. So it's normal, I think, that you would come home and spit at your partner a bit because your partner does, because your partner loves you and your partner is, mm. you're constant. And there's a certain, I mean, not that I think either of us are ever bad tempered consciously. I mean, like you will say to me, oh, you're being bad tempered. I'll say, you, I'm being, you're being bad tempered. And we both go, oh God, we do catch ourselves mm. and go, oh God, yeah, actually I am. Mm. Um, it's like my mum can be very bad tempered and very crotchety and very negative. But whenever I say it to her, it's always a total surprise mm. to her. She goes, I mean, she doesn't really admit it, but I can see she goes, oh, God, maybe I am, but, I didn't realise. But I wonder if that's a hugely important component of people who become known as bad-tempered, is that people feel they can't tell them that. Well, that's why consciousness is so important, and that's why I think... I mean, with me and you, I think... Well, with every couple, there's a ring fence that's put round it, so mm. I'm really sort of wary of saying to you, 
if you're in a bad temper, if you're just being old man cross, because I know it's very painful for you that, because you, you think of your grandfather. Yeah. When you say to me, oh, you're doing that thing that your mum does, it's very painful to me because yeah. that's my mum. So, um, but, but I recognise what you mean. It's a shortcut into it, isn't it? I yeah. know if I say, you're being a cross old man, I know actually in the back of my head that that's going to make you think of your dad. It's going to trigger you, yeah. your granddad. Sorry, we keep saying dad because Mark didn't have a dad. Yeah. So the reason I called him dad, dad was dad. I didn't know my father. So this might be a bit yeah. confusing. I didn't know my father and there were lots of... Uh, I had an aunt and an uncle and my mum calling Grandad Gordon dad, and I thought, hey, I'm going to call granddad. him my dad as well then. So I, so I suppose the thing is, how do how does a couple flag up that the other person is in a bit of a negative, okay. bad-tempered thing without going to the heart of that person and well, really hurting them? Yeah, because that was going to be my next point, because sometimes what happens with that is if you go to the heart of... if you, It's like making a preemptive strike in war without the missile necessarily being a danger. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you think you're about, you're about to be hit with someone's mood, so you send out a sort of uh, an interception. You can't do that, though. No, well, no. In a, be well, because Maybe in a weird way, as soon as you hit me with a, you being bad-tempered old crotchety man, it makes me the very thing for a moment that I perhaps wasn't at that point. You might have read me as being in a bad temper, but I wasn't in a bad temper. Well, I think whenever we say, it's like, well, that's what I said. I, don't, I think it's the intention. So yeah. when you say to me, oh, you're being really bad tempered, you're being, it is often because I've got other things in my mind and I'm panicking about something or I'm worrying about something, so I just spit it. And the same with you. You're not meaning to be bad tempered. Mm. You're not like a nasty old man who's wanting to be like nasty to it. Never. It's just that other things are crowding into the brain, into the mind, into the into your soul, but, and you spit. We all do it. But do you not think that's the starting point of someone becoming a bad-tempered person, if you don't challenge Yeah, them? if it's not challenged by the partner, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. because I remember there was a long period of time, I mean, another phrase that's often used in our house is eggshells. I'm treading on eggshells, or there's the elephant in the room. I'm usually the elephant in the room, and it's usually my eggshells. And I suppose... After so many years of marriage, I do think what, what happens, and I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, is you begin to think, hang on, there's a sort of... It might have been appropriate to that five-year period in our relationship, but it's not necessarily appropriate to this six-year period of our relationship. And it, it may have shifted. So sometimes I would think, well, hang on a minute, it's not always my eggshells that are on the floor. I'm not the only eggshelly person in the house. I'm not the only person, you know... As the, I don't the, think anyone's ever No, said no, that. no, but I'm just sort of taking it personally. But don't towards, get chippy about it. Oh, no, I'm not getting chippy. That's another case. phrase that she's an awful I lot, think, getting chippy. I think the case is, is that... In a family of four very strong, individual, independent people, it would be insane if every single one of us wasn't sometimes creating mm. eggshells. Because we live in, a, as so many people do now, an open plan yeah. situation. Oh. There is nowhere to go if I want a bad temper. There yeah. is nowhere to go and just decompress. Yeah. Like sometimes I feel like I've just talked all day long and sometimes I just want to just go and not talk. And that's why often I'll go to our room and just watch something on my phone or something. It's because actually I don't want to talk. No, that's fair enough. And sometimes you you we've don't want to, to talk. To and the thing is we do we do tend to because we are very close and we are a codependent couple for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are our we lives should do, are very we should do a quiet. podcast about codependency. Yeah, we are very codependent. We're quite happy with that because we like having a a codependent relationship. But that means that doesn't mean that sometimes we don't want to be codependent. We want to go Listen, I love you dearly, but can I just... It's like I came in yesterday and um, there was nobody downstairs and I went out there for two minutes on my own and it was lovely. It was so yeah, lovely. Yeah. I love all of you, yeah. but I needed to just decompress for a couple of minutes. Yeah. So I know if you'd all been in here, I would have created some eggshells. Yeah. yeah. But the problem there is... Okay, so this is the big question that everyone I can hear listening to this on the tube or going to work wherever they are, watching it on YouTube's going, that's all well and good. There's a reason for it. We can understand it and maybe there's some decompression. But if, say, I had been in and I had picked up on your mood and I had picked up that you were throwing eggshells about but not in a totally, in a totally understandable way, if I was to have stepped over and said, babe, being a bit eggshelly, you would roast me for dinner. How do we get past that situation? I don't know. I mean, I think it's the same Because what you, you would roast you me get, with, you'd you hit get, me back with my own behaviour as you another You get really example. cross too. I mean, there's no space between us 
to say that the other one is. Because <laughs> I think usually... It's like shit off a shovel. Because I think usually what happens for both of us equally is when the other person says, oh God, you're being a bit eggshell, there will have been a period of time when we've been ignoring the eggshells with each other. So you might have been ignoring me. I might have been eggshelly for a day or so or an hour. And then I'll say to you a few hours that you're being a bit eggshelly and I'll think, get out. I just haven't... I think women I do that more. I haven't said anything about your age. No, well, I don't think you think can women, have it that way. No, I, I think, think women can... button their lip a lot more. So I, I do find it quite shocking when you'll come at me of a morning. I can't think of a recent example, but there have been many occasions where you'd say, you know, if I've come down and I'm quiet, it's a morning. Say it's a Saturday morning. You are busy and frenetic and full of energy in the morning. And you, as you just said, you quite like to retire and retreat and watch your stuff and have silence in the evening. I've kind of got used to that being your thing. That's why me and Maddie have a bit of time of the evening and all that. Um, but in the morning, some mornings I can be like that, but most mornings it's a slow get to go for me. It's yeah. a slow It's kind very of... hard that because we have different energies. So I am a morning person. But you read me I'm as being really... in a bad mood within the first always... five minutes of being up. Well, I think that's because... A, through a lot of our marriage because you do suffer from depression and I get that so for a lot of the time I have never said anything but my heart has sunk in the morning because I'm up and happy and I can see that you're struggling really struggling and that's not your fault but it is a different energy so I'll feel like oh my god I better not be as happy as I feel I better just be just a bit calmer and a bit quieter but my my energy, my essence is going, da 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 and I want to do loads of stuff, because I'm like yeah, that until about two, to, and then yeah, I fold. But I wake up wanting to do lots of stuff, but it's interesting you should say that, because, you know, and I'm sorry that you feel like that, but equally, I've, I've begun to realise that I think just before I wake up, I think on a cellular level, not in a horrible way from you, because you're, you're, check, you're wanting to check the orientation for the morning, I get that. But I do sometimes feel like every morning there's a quick emotional X-ray or an MRI, MRI scan of how I'm feeling. Yeah, but before I think... I've even yeah, but hang on. But mm. before I've even comprehended how I'm feeling. I think that's true, and I think that anybody that's listening to this that lives with a partner who has depression and who's darkness. I mean, you've said to me many times, I wake up and I feel like I've got a black cloud on me. I feel like I've got a house on yeah, my there's back. There's many days I don't say that. So I, no, I know. But what you've got to understand is if you live with somebody with depression, you are reading them. Mm. You are scanning them. Of course you are. I absolutely would say that's true. I'm, I'm sussing out the situation. I'm sussing out if you're going to be okay that morning or if you're going to be just dark or if you're just going to just because there is a difference when you're very dark so this is different tired, to bad temper doesn't it and when you're and when you're just needing to be quiet and i think the same would be for you well it's about reading those situations isn't it because sometimes bad temperedness that comes across as bad temperedness it's just rude and it's it's yeah. because people are taking advantage yeah. of each other over time yeah. sometimes bad temperedness is because you're dealing with stress inside mm. That could be me being stressed about any kinds of things, relationships that I have, mm. family stuff, whatever. With you, it could be your depression. It could be, you know, problems with the girls. It could be anything. And it manifests itself as bad temperedness. And I think what we're talking about is reading those different Well, no, I think, I think my advice is very people... hard in a marriage. It's very hard. Well, I do think without wishing to sound like some middle class idiot sitting in a Shoreditch cafe saying we should all sit down and talk to each other. Because so, a lot of people, I've seen comments come up on our YouTube uh, comments film saying oh sit down and talk with each other that's my worst phrase worst nightmare. used to be your now do you say this again sit down and talk about things i'm not saying talk about things but i think you do need a strategy because i go straight to shit off a shovel sort of injustice at the point that i'm told as i'm just naturally kind of doing <laughs> without wishing to go when bag puss works you know i'm doing that emotionally for a lot longer than you are in a morning so to have felt prejudged, I understand why you're doing it, to orientate yourself and be as kind, you know, is maybe don't think about it as much. Because one thing I do feel is, I do feel I can come to you if I'm not in a good place or if I wake up in a bad place. I do feel I can say it, but mm. if I'm asked first, there is sometimes an element of... I don't ask you much. No, 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 you don't ask me much. But sometimes I do feel, I do feel there's a zone in a morning between us and it doesn't have to be with us even being together. It can be the first text or a first phone conversation where an assessment is being made far too quickly of my temper or bad temperedness or I not. I would say I feel exactly the same. It's interesting, isn't oh, it? Because right. I can see you're feeling that quite strongly and you just articulated exactly how I oh, feel. Right. Oh, so I feel always a bit nervous. It's like, oh my God, if I don't do this or behave like this, right. what's Mark going to read me feeling? Right. So. Well, should we make a vow not to pre-think and overthink with each other and perhaps just know that the other will say to the other, 
Well, I mean, there is the key, and here we are talking about how to stay married. That is the key to a relationship, is it not? Being able to communicate without assumptions, without Mm. saying that you know exactly how the person's thinking, without, Mm. you know, by listening, by all of that. Of course, we'd love to do that, but that's the struggle of marriage, isn't it? That's what we're trying to do on a daily basis. But I think the bad-temperedness, and we do have bad-tempered moments with each other, but I know some people have to put up with people that are bad tempered the whole time. Well, and I think that must be exhausting. Yeah. And how do they crack that nut, thinking more of the people that are listening to us? And when we've got, uh, and I suppose when we've got into a real rut of being bad tempered with each other, the only way forward is to sit down and talk about it and say, listen, it's getting a bit much. Well, I'm actually extreme, a bit fed up. I'm well, presumably one would think that extreme, boring. but I'm thinking of many other relationships I've witnessed, and you can see that one partner in it is incredibly bad tempered. And my sort of not judging, I'm not you never judge, you can never judge a relationship or whatever, but you know, you walk away with an impression of anything, mm. don't you? You have first impressions. And there'll be many situations where I'll, I'll see a couple together and I'll see one of them being bad tempered or hear a comment or something. And I think your only assessment of that is that they're not happy about something in the relationship. It is the first thought. Mm, Whereas, I think sometimes we're too bad tempered in front of people with each other. Are we? Yeah, oh. I think we do. I think we're too, especially in front of the kids and your mum, I think. Not, not so much my parents, but we're often bad tempered with each other in front of your mum. Mm. And I sometimes find that I get really sad about that because I think... It's just crossing a line and right. it's a bit mucky and I don't like it and and it makes me feel a bit sad. The thing for me about bad temperedness and how how it's corrosive in a relationship is it's very boring, isn't it? Yeah. Like if I, I'm bad tempered or you're bad it's predictable. It's like, oh God, here it's beige. we go. No, no, it's, it's beige. beige. It's beige. It's the colour of the walls in my nan and granddad's yeah. bungalow. And you can't be romantic and you can't feel nice about each other and you don't no. want to cuddle up to each other. I think it's just it's no. You know, familiarity breeds contempt. I think that's often where bad temperedness comes in. I can take it out on you because you're there all the time. Not consciously, but subconsciously that's what one does. I just wish that the term bad tempered just wasn't bandied around so much when perhaps someone is feeling something a bit more complicated and a bit more undefinable. I think everyone can feel something a bit unclear. and, 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 you know, I do like quietude at certain times of the day and at certain points. As do you, and I recognise. I, I hope. Ours is just a different. Yeah, no, no. But I hope you realise that I've now recognised that. I do. Yeah. You know, I do. Mine is in the morning. Yeah. And yours, in, you'll say, oh, I bet you're going to. Well, I, you're going to be too tired for this. And it was like, well, yeah, because my yeah. energy is more. I'm more of a morning. You person start than you. like a Catherine wheel, and you burn out. I start like a slow tether on a rocket, mm. and by the end of the evening, I'm fucking blowing up everything. Well, I mean, so, I, yeah, I, I work to a frenzy. Is wrong. It's just very, very difficult. But, I think it should be one of the things when people get married. It's like, are you a lark or are you a nightingale? A mole? What's the one that gets... Isn't it a lark and a mole? A lark or an owl? Are you a lark or are you an owl? Are you a a slug or are you a ferret? No. Um... The, right, so moving into the final little discussion on better. So what does a couple do? Because I'm a great believer that men suffer from their own menopausal hormonal shifts. Now, a classic moment for when I... And it's a phrase I know I use. When I use it, I'm using it purposefully barbed and with a purpose to change something. When I say women of a certain age, when you do... What's the one you do? Mansplaining? Is that, is that similar? Well, no, I don't say it. That's the yeah. thing, but I don't say it. Oh, right, okay. But you call... You know, you'll call me a grumpy old... Oh, you're a miserable old git and you're a this, that and the other and what have you. Um, and I'll call you a woman of a certain age. Now, that's generally attached to... How does a marriage, how does a couple negotiate? A, it's a very real thing, obviously, happening to women. But I am genuinely of the opinion that it happens in a much sort of more micro... Are you talking about hormones? Yeah, hormonal yeah, shifts that cause does. bad temperedness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does one manage definitely that? Does. Because actually it's no one's fault. Well... And yet it can I'm be unbearable to live with. I'm going to say something that you're just going to absolutely hate Because I now. wanted to leave you countless times with your bad... Not just bad temperedness. It wasn't bad temperedness. It was bad temperedness coupled with an absolutely illogical insanity to what you were saying. And I would, on a, at least six occasions, sit on what felt like the cliff edge of, a, of an entire marriage, being willing to th- you were willing to throw it into the flames and dash it against the rocks based on something so ridiculous. I remember standing in alcoves in Soho after meetings, tearing my hair out with fear, thinking this is it because it's bad tempered bat. Well, I've had countless times where I thought, I Sorry. just can't have this marriage anymore. I'm going to have to get divorced. What do you mean? Because I can't face this grey oh my God. cloud Touché. coming down the stairs, just passing me by, never saying good morning, never saying how are you, just wafting and just hanging, and me just thinking, oh my God. 
Who is I this? I can't live with this. Who is this? With, with you. With oh my God, that's me. That's you. The dark <laughs> black cloud floating down the stairs and hanging Great in passing. the air. Great passing. It used to be a phrase you... To which I'm not allowed to say anything because... Why? But you because always you did. Go, Just leave me alone. It's the morning. Mm. And I think loads of people have that. And you do. And I'm sure there's loads of people... I know, I feel the same. You think, you're making your teeth. Think, I might have another 50 years of this. But hang on a minute. How does that do answer it? what one does in the face of the menopausal man? Well... I know that you're going to, I'm very far away from being able to control my temper and being a better person, but I can th feel things shifting. I've done meditation now every single day, morning and night, since mm. the beginning of January, mindfulness. Mm. I've done three masterclasses now on mindfulness, just on my phone. And something is starting to click, and it's about... Because often when we go into bad temperedness or irritability... It's because we want to move away from how we're feeling. We want mm. to shift away from it. And mindfulness treats you to just go, this is how it feels. Just sit with it for a minute. Yeah. Just sit with it. Which is incredibly difficult for anyone to do in a busy family. All of us. Yes. Whether it's you, me or the kids. Nobody is better or worse than at this. We're all... We all do, I mean, I think our kids even more so are the victims of our energy because we mm. are two, which also makes our relationship amazing and brilliant, but we are two full power mm. from morning till night. Well, I'm not according to you. There's electricity going on of some sort, whether it be negative or yeah, positive. Yeah, yeah. We're not just quiet. We're never just quiet. Even our moods are very electric, whether we're down, whether we're whatever. And mindfulness is teaching me to just go, okay, just be with it. Just be with it. Don't try and distract by eating or by drinking or by having a row or by storming off or by... But it's... Mindfulness meditation is a thing that people practice for decades to try and get this no, light. No. But for me, Mindful I'm really maniacs. in a place where I know it's the only thing that is going to help me. Because since my menopause, my emotions have been so much more erratic and I haven't been able to control them in the way that I have. I mean, that's my essence. I'm a very yeah. like fiery, half Arab person. Mm. <laughs> it's definitely my Arab side of my family is more like that. But I've always been able to control it to a degree, but that's become more difficult after menopause. The only way, the only shining light for me is meditation. Such a But what about for me, when you're being bad-tempered and, and in, inscribed within the very bad-temperedness is, is a little bit like the, the definition of addiction. Uh, what defines the bad temperedness of sort of hormonal shifts and what have you, or uncontrollability, is that it's it, it's screaming to your body, "I'm not bad tempered. This is me, and I'm right to be me." Mm. I mean, there's a look. Well, that's not. That's also exactly how you are when you're bad tempered. I mean, my God, <laughs> let's just I, get real I did, here. I did say. I did, You've got a temper like I've never seen. I did say that men get the menopause. <laughs> With bursting veins, so like, let's not like make ourselves look too pretty penis. here. <laughs> Girls almighty. I have just said to you what I think the way is, is that I'm trying to correct mm. that. Mm. You know, I'm trying to just, I have terrible arguments with myself. And I go, don't do that, don't do that, be calm, stay calm. Mm. Just, just, and, and I lose all the time, but I am trying to do something about it. I recognise it, I accept it. Yes. I accept that since my menopause, I've always been firing, I don't like that in myself. But since my menopause has been less, I've been less able to yeah. control it. Would you say that I'm more or less bad tempered now than I used to be? No, I, I think, I think you're never bad tempered on purpose. You're not like a nasty person. Like all that of what we've said in the last half hour, I think is true for you as it is for me. Sometimes you get overwhelmed. Yeah. You get overwhelmed and you snap and you, I have huge highs. And, and it's ugly, you know, and same with me. Mm. I get overwhelmed, I snap, and it's ugly. And then your partner is looking at you and seeing your ugliness. Mm. And that's when real love and real, the vows of marriage come into place, where you go, okay, this is really ugly. I've got to wait for it to pass. Right. As we get to the end of this podcast, I want to throw up three possible subject matters. So you can say, I want to throw up. No, I want to throw up. <laughs> um, I want to throw up. Th can you share with us any other... Th topics, questions, statements even that happened in relationships that you think would make a good podcast? Because I've just had three ideas. Well, I had one last week. We should definitely do a podcast on drama queen. Mm. You being a drama queen and me being a drama queen. God, did you hear the second sentence? She never listens to the second sentence. You just said we. 
There is no bigger tro- drama you are a queen. Much, do you know what? You are a much bigger that drama queen. That is absolute queen. rubbish. Hold oh, it back. My Hold it God. back. Hold we it back. We will have to bring the children in on we'll it talk because on they that. will tell we'll you. We'll talk on that. I think we should also do a podcast where the girls really tell us what we're like. That will be fun. I think we should also do one about secrecy. I heard a great radio show about the importance of secrets, but also how Thank they can you. destroy secrets. Thank secrets you. can you destroy. Always want to know I know, I know. I'm a nosy so annoying. Parker. But secrecy in marriage, when is it good? Secrecy in, in family too. I don't like the word secrecy. I'd like the word privacy. But when Some is a things... secret when is a secret a lie? Well, that's a completely different Well, that's thing. a topic we're privacy going to discuss. We don't need to go is, into it now. Privacy yeah. is what I would like to so say. There, privacy within a relationship. So there's three. And then another one. Nadia has t- t- coined the phrase, I've got the ick. It's a phrase no, her... I haven't coined it. Women have been saying that. For oh, okay. She time. hasn't coined it. She time. didn't coin it. It's a phrase that's been going for years. I just never heard it. Yeah. Um, because I've never caused the ick until I was with Nads. And Well, you will have caused the ick with girls, but they just didn't tell you. <laughs> it's a very, very brutal thing to say. Jesus You have Christ. to be... Well, any men listening, be warned. No, no, no. I have to say that I've got to a point in my life now where I used to overhear Nadia talking to my eldest, uh, Izzy, and they would be talking about boys and they would talk about the ick. I remember I would leave the room and I felt much like a toddler going, what the fuck is the ick? Oh my God. It sounds like the most awful it is. disease. It that is. You could it's possibly like when you have. go, ugh. Yeah, anyway, so we're going to do one about what gives and causes ick. the ick. I think those are four great subjects, but we'd love to know some of yours too. Sometimes the best podcasts are those where you say, you're a fat bastard or you're a dirty scumbag. Things like that, you know, where you have a phrase and it's just like, you're filthy. You know, we don't, why are we you do so read, rude? We do read all your comments, yeah. but because we have to answer so many for the vlogs, we don't answer them, but believe you me, we sit here and read them and we have but such a answer this one. We'll make a real special effort to get to this to this and podcast and we'll answer. And I'll answer. If you ever see an answer from a guy called The Dog House, that's just my... Well, that's Google my account. Google account. Yeah, anyway, but five stars on podcast if you like it. One star if you think I'm bad-tempered. And uh, do follow us, subscribe on YouTube and all the rest of it. Notification bells everywhere. Hit every bell end you can. I mean bell that you can. <laughs> Lots Bye. of love. Bye.